Eric, how are you? Good, how you doing? I could be better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. I hear you're feeling a little under the weather. And yeah, then well, in the hospital, so. yeah, my dad's in the hospital, which he oh. needs to be. Hopefully he gets better. And yeah. um, I, uh, I, I really do sound worse than what I, or I sound worse than what I feel, on all honestly. I, I, oh I'm not, I don't feel that bad. Um, mainly it's, I think a lot of it's just, it's going around really bad. Oh yeah. I think everybody and their brother is getting something. seems like. Yeah. We're going to wait just a few minutes until I get, uh, some mods in here and, uh, Hey Stephanie, is Lori around? Oh yeah. She's doing what she's always doing. Sitting over there, uh, knitting <laughs> away. <laughs> Hey, Ginger, I appreciate that. I need you really to listen. We're going to go over some stuff and you may have something that you see that we don't. So I appreciate that. And you can always go back and watch the replay and look at everything that's um, we're going to put out tonight. So she's crocheting, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what, <laughs> she's working, I think, knitting. Get, you know, knitting, getting ready knitting. to... Um, She's maybe going to make a Valentine's Day blanket, I think. Oh, wow. Put on, the, put on the Harry's page and see if we can raffle it off or oh, yeah. bid, do the bid thing again or whatever and see how it goes. Yeah. So, like the red and white colors? Yep. Be red and white. Yep. With hearts? I don't know if she's going to do any hearts. She'll probably put her little heart on all, like she does on all of them. But yeah. I don't yeah. think she's got down how to pattern a heart in it yet. Yeah. I want it. <laughs> yes, you can, but you don't want to. <laughs> yep, Ginger's from Iowa too. Oh, really? Oh. Yep, yep, she's from Iowa too. Uh, it's kind of neat oh, that man. there's so many people. Hey, Sean's Princess, how are you? Um, I thought I had you as a mod, Sean's Princess. I know I did at one time, I don't know what happened there, so I added you as one of my mods. Um, anyways, it's neat that you get to know these people and you have so much that in common with some, uh, and they live around you and they like the same different kind of true crime. Oh yeah. And it's just really, it's, it's neat to get to know people like that. Oh yeah. I mean, like I say, through, just through the Harry page and, and all this stuff, the YouTube stuff and everything, like I said. You definitely meet a lot of interesting people and, and like say a lot of people that you know you have something in common with i guess you know yeah exactly exactly well i guess we can go ahead and get started first um <coughs> most of you guys know who mark milligan is he is harry milligan's brother and we are here to bring awareness to harry's disappearance and yeah. find out what happened um we have little to no information, but what information we do have, we have to go with that. And um, we've got a file, and it's confusing, isn't it, Mark? And Mark, yeah. is, uh, I guess that's one thing I should explain. You know, a little yeah. bit. Let's say we're, you know, we're we're kind of slowly progressing our way through the case file, uh, or what they call a case file of Harry's, yeah. uh, maintained by the the sheriff's department here in Monroe County. Um, I had a copy of the entire case, uh, I believe, since 1996 when I started in law enforcement. The, the sheriff gave me a, an entire copy of it. Uh, even at, at that time, you know, it's a lot different than now. There's a lot of handwritten notes, a lot of different things like that. But it was still, mm, I mean, it, it never had, it never seems to have been very organized in the first place. Um, and then when I got a, another copy and. 2000 from the sheriff's department when i did a freedom of information request uh, i got it in in what i think was a worse case scenario of a mess you know i mean it was uh so i mean that's kind of um the background on the case file uh, a lot of it is in in you know deputies or the ex-sheriff uh you know former sheriff whatever uh, handwriting those type of things so, um, you know, what we're doing now is just trying to walk through it, make, you know, look at the, the things that are within that case file and see if it triggers anybody, uh, you know, 
to know something, to say something, to maybe see something uh, in comparing the different notes and the different statements and things that were, um, you know, taken back then and seeing if maybe, uh, you know, somebody can help make more sense of it than, than uh, you know, what I have over the years, I guess. I, I agree. Um, well, I, I just want to wish everyone a happy new year. I know Mark does too. Um, we want your inner light awaken and enlighten the world. Uh, may this year be a year of sharing and love and peace with all of you. Let's begin 2023 on a positive note by saying, on behalf of Harry's family, we cannot begin to express our heartfelt thanks to each and every single person who has supported the mission to bring Harry Milligan home to rest. It's going to take every one of us working together, and I mean every one of us, to carry a light by sharing resources, ideas. That's what I was talking to Ginger, Sean's princess, Stephanie. There's something in here that we are missing. I feel it. And we need everybody's ideas to make it happen. If we stay positive, we're going to get positive results. I do truly believe that. I've been trying to spread a lot of positivity on YouTube since there's a lot of negativity. But I know if I follow negativity, I tend to be more negative. If I follow positivity, I'm more positive. It's just the way the world is. But Exactly. Huh? I said, you're exactly right there. <laughs> yep. If we keep positive and uh, we just, we thank you guys all for caring enough to be here, to be on Harry's Facebook page. Hey, Milan, how are you? Thank you for being here. And um, we just, we, the Milligan family has waited 38 years, almost 39 years to find out what happened to him. Let's unite and bring him closure, them closure, because you would have to be a monster to not want to know what happened to Harry Milligan, because I know for a fact that I know people in this town. I know they're not monsters. Um, I know that, you know, if we could just come together, I have got around the banner. If anybody has information, you guys can do this without anybody knowing who you are. Contact the Monroe County Sheriff. If you have anything, whether it's something little, it may be what finds Harry. And the purpose to why we're doing the videos is we want to break down and discuss all the circumstances associated with Harry's involuntary missing person, 30, almost 39 year old case. And it takes a lot of courage to sit down and have these uncomfortable conversations. I'm sure it's very uncomfortable for Mark and Lori. Um, it, it, and it shouldn't be that way. This is his brother. Yes. Stephanie at the last 15 to 30 minutes of this, we are going to let People ask all their questions, so be jotting them down. You guys can come up on panel if you want. You don't have to. So make sure you guys are jotting questions down because we're going to give the last part of the video for you guys as subscribers to ask questions. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm more than happy to answer anything. I mean, nothing, you know, don't think that anything is too crazy or, you know, or maybe it's been asked before, you know, I mean, uh, any questions is great. I'll try to answer them the best that I can. Uh, we can talk about them and maybe, you know, like I said, it's all about, you know, an open discussion of, of what we do know, you know, things that I know, um, personally, just from, from doing these things and doing what we've been doing for the last two years, uh, of people reaching out to me and talking to me and saying, Hey, I know this, or I know that, uh, you know, or, or a lot of times it's even just, uh, ideas, you know, of, of, of things to do or, or, you know, places to look, you know. Um, so, you know, anything, you know, if, if you think of something, write it down. You can you can bring it up here later. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you know, you can private message me later and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions, you know. But I think the more that's talked about openly, uh, you know, it gives everybody a chance to have input and ideas and, 
and yeah, when, and when do I I'll be the first to admit uh, I don't always agree with everything. You know, I mean, I'm I have my way of thinking, and so does everybody else. So yeah, but, uh, but we it's all, all about have, discussing it. You know, yeah, we can all agree to disagree a lot of times. That's it. You know, you see too many people getting these big arguments over stupid stuff, you know, and it's just, you know, everybody's got a matter of opinion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You are exactly right. And this is a person, a human, this is not just some, you know, he, he was, he was here and then he wasn't, uh, I'm going to play a video too, just of pictures and stuff when, while we're talking. Um, but first uh, let me get through of why our purpose of, of doing the videos. Um, because I don't want anybody to think that we are, you know, accusing anybody. That's not what we're doing. Um, there's, there's no, there's none, none of that happening. We just need the answers to the questions. And the, I mean, I do want to say that uh, it, it encourages thoughtful discussion and it is so vital that all comments need to remain constructive too. In order to solve Harry's disappearance, legitimate tips are needed. So if you have any, inform any information, please contact the number that I have scrolling across the, the uh, screen. It's 641-932-7815. So as you follow along with the discussion, please, please, please feel free to join in the chat. Come on panel if you want. Like I said, jot down your questions and we will reserve the last 15 to 30 minutes, however long it takes for people to ask their questions. Okay. Um, so I'm going to bring up a couple things, Mark, and I want you to talk about these. Okay. Yep. Sure. Let me get and and up. Th that's Harry's car that I've got as a back, um, and you'll be able to see that too better. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up closer. <clears throat> okay, do you want to talk about this? Um, basically, it's it's a note in the file. Um, talking and it seems to be from i'm gonna guess you know right uh after harry's disappearance uh where i am gonna assume um either the sheriff i'm I, it looks to be i believe denny carr's handwriting yeah. the, the, the sheriff. that's what i thought but we we don't know but, for I, sure. but I can't be for sure but i'm i would guess that it is yeah. where he talked to a, a, a an individual here in, from albia that was in my grade denise spurgeon uh, about a party that she had um, the Saturday night, June 30th, when Harry came up missing. Yeah. Uh, and basically explaining that on Friday night, apparently, he was with Tim Lopeman at some point uh, and talked to Denise about going to the party at her house, um, you know, and I and, and she, that she invited him to the party. Um you know, and, and that he was excited to be, that he was ready to go back to school. I think maybe, you know, I don't know, getting bored of, of Albion and, <laughs> or whatever, but, and that he was ready to go back to school, back down at college. Yeah. Well, I'm going to read this out loud just in case some people can't see it very good. I've got my glasses on. Mm -hmm. um, if I didn't have them on, I couldn't see it. It says, <laughs> Harry was with Tim Friday night. Denise Spurgeon talked to them about a party at her house Saturday night and initiate or and what's that say In, invited Tim. invited gosh yeah. invited tim and harry denise was home from school harry walked waked 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 asked. Up, <laughs> at, asked geez i need different glasses if he was going to spurgeon's okay that's one of them and the reason why i am bringing these up is because there was this that that was in the file. I just got to find it here. I've got so much in here still on Harry. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's this one. 
of course, my dogs are going to bark, you guys. Uh, they must see a, a raccoon or a deer. Okay. This one right here says, Sheriff, you need to contact Tim Lofman, uh, refer referring, referring to Harry Milligan's case. Steve Rockwell said that he said that Harry wasn't himself a couple of days before the disappearance. Also, Steve can give you a lot of information as to friends and other people associated with Milligan. Also, he said that it was it was 4.30 to 4.45 when him and Adler let Harry off. I was interrupted and had to stop in the middle of what may be a lot of information. I think he, meaning Steve Rockwell, would be a good person to have in and grill. Attempted to call Rockwell on July 4th at 84 at 830. Called Leonard Mill Milligan, which is Harry's dad. Nothing new. We'll check with Marine Reserve regarding group regarding the dates for camp. And that was Denny Carr that wrote this. Those are his initials. Yeah, I would say that's his handwriting. <laughs> I'm not sure who the deputy is that, that left the message for him. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Type message. It, 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 there's nowhere to, to tell who typed that message or, you know, I wish I did know. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, know, I mean, it seems to me that, that whoever was talking to, to Rockwell uh, seems that Rockwell had a lot more information that could have been relayed, um, you know, which I still find kind of strange anyway, because like I say, and you know, even with talking to Steve, um, the times that I have talked to him, him and Harry weren't close friends, you know, so I don't quite get, you know, other than what maybe went on that night, they weren't the, they weren't friends that hung around all the time. together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and why, you know, even, you know, even, even, you know, it says right there in that statement to, to, that you think he'd be a good person to bring in and grill, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's, I guess, typical kind of law enforcement talk, you know, of, of bringing somebody in and, and interrogating them or questioning them and, and trying to get more information out of them and why that was never really done. Um, I don't know, because, you know, in my last meeting a month or so ago with, Steve Rockwell, uh, I asked him specifically with with uh, the deputy sitting right there that's handling the case if he'd ever been formally interviewed by law enforcement. And the answer was no. He's never, ever been formally interviewed by law enforcement. And he was the last person to supposedly see my brother alive. Yeah. Has anybody ever really been formally interviewed in your opinion? Uh, you know, like I say, I, I don't know if we're going to look at one tonight. I know we talked about it a little bit. I mean, uh, as far as in the case file, I think there's actually two formal interviews, one done of Mike Stalker and one done of Steve Townsend, both by Larry Jones, the city officer, um, which I don't quite understand that either because uh, it's not a city case. It never was. Uh, it's never been handled by the city at all and why. Um, those two interviews were done by Larry Jones. Um, I, I guess somebody would have to explain that one to me. I don't understand that one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't either <laughs> at all. Because he was not a deputy, was he? He was city? He was city officer. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, just to, to add to that, I mean, you know, um, <laughs> Well, I'm kind of letting some things out of the bag that I know. That, huh? Well, yeah, of course it happened in the city, but it still wasn't, it's never been a sheriff's department case. Yeah. Um, you know, it's always, I mean, it's never been a city case. It's always been a sheriff's department case. And, you know, I, I guess I don't, I don't understand why that would be. I mean, um, and I'm, I may go into that a little farther, but <laughs> That's yeah. all I'm going to say for that for right at the moment, I guess. Okay. Um, okay. I will do that, Brandy. When I'm, when I'm get around here, I will send, oh, you want me to send it now so you can put it in the chat? Okay. Hold on here, guys. Let me get uh, this. I'll answer. So, Stephanie said they, so they only attempted to call one time. Uh, in that note, that's what it says. 
I know he was talked to, um, Stephanie, like uh, on the, I think on the 4th, uh, July 3rd or July 4th. And there's some notes um, from that conversation about the night. Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, no, you know, there's no, <coughs> I guess what people would expect, you know, or what I would even expect, even, you know, even back, th even back in the eighties, um, you know, normally when you, you know, do an interview of somebody or talk to somebody, there's a, a typed up report it says day, date, time, when, who done it, uh, those type of things. You know, I mean, I know that this, should have been the practice why it wasn't done that way. I don't know, because I'll be honest, um, you know, Tim Ernie was murdered in Albia, you know, five months before my brother, it's an unsolved murder from, from Albia. Um, and I have that entire case file and there's hand, there's some handwritten notes, but for the most part, the, the interviews of people are all done up, typed up those type of things. You know, so I, I don't understand, you know, that's the hard part that's hard to understand now is, is, you know, why weren't they, you know, I mean, like I say, the only two in there are from Larry Jones, which are, you know, in 94, I believe, 10 years after the fact, or even later, I don't, I, I'd have to look at those ones to be sure they might've been in 97 or 98 even. Yeah. Well, it's, it's all crazy. I know that. Um, this says the tape case at Lundstrom's. Harry wanted them um, bad. Tim and Harry went up to try to get his tapes Friday night at about 1.30 in the morning, Saturday morning. Right. For, um, for night, Harry said he... What's that Friday, say? It's Friday night. Friday I mean, night. Friday Harry's, night. Yeah. yeah. He okay. got a lot of money from the Marines. Yeah, he got a lot of money from the Marines that day. Said it was happiness. That's and just. Knew, and, if, and if you knew Harry, <laughs> he liked his money. You know. Well, I mean, what <laughs> what kid don't? You know, back then, I mean, you know, I'm gonna assume, you know, the money he's talking about there is. <laughs> is the fact that normally when you go through Marine Corps boot camp, you don't get paid while you're there because you're in boot camp. Uh, yeah. you, you got no use for it. So basically what happens is once you get out of boot camp and either like in his case as a reserve, come home, start going to school or, you know, like I was active duty. Once you get to your active duty location, they give you that back pay for the, you know, two, three months that you spent in boot camp. So, yeah. you know, back then it's probably a pretty good chunk of change. You know, I'm going to guess, you know, anywhere from 1200 to a couple thousand dollars, you know? Yep. Okay. You want to talk about this or you go I ahead and see if I can see what it is exactly. This is uh Larry Jones with Mike Klaus. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, okay. This is a 96. So like I said, this is yeah. one of the only, um, typed up reports um, in the case file. Um, this here, you know, I'm not exactly sure what triggered um, this interview in 96 from Larry. Um, so, like I said, why the city got involved and why Larry Jones was the one that did this uh, interview. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and if you can tell, I think you might, you must have my wife's old copy of the, no, uh, no. Oh, I, was, I was wondering because with all the stuff that's crossed out, underlined and yeah, highlighted, no. that looks like something she does. No, no. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah. Lori said you got her file. So yeah, that, that might be her scribblings and stuff on there. But basically, nope, this, is, this is not Lori's scribblings. I, I promise you that. Right. Um, <laughs> I guess we all have scribblings in our yeah, in yeah, the yeah. files. But uh, like I said, uh, this is just an interview that Larry Jones done of uh, Mike of Mike Klaus or Mike Stalker, uh, the, the owner of the Waterworks Bar in 1996. This would have been... Um, right about the time around when I started working at the law center in Albia as a cop. So, yeah. Okay. Well, let's get started. Yeah. We'll read this. It says officers interview slash interrogation report 
Case number 95-3067, February 17th, 1996. This officer, meaning Larry Jones, interviewed Michael Klaus incident to the disappearance of Harry Milligan on July 1st, 1984. The interview was cut, conducted in my upstairs office at the Monroe County Law Center, Law Enforcement Center. I first advised Klaus that he was voluntarily, did not have to answer any questions, and was free to leave the interview at any point he desired to. Klaus stated that he understood these rules and agreed to talk to me. Klaus advised that he was the manager slash owner of the Waterworks Bar during this period of time. Klaus stated that Milligan came in the bar alone on this night of his disappearance. Klaus said that Milligan had a couple of beers, then told Klaus that he was going to go home because he had to get up early to go to work. Klaus believes that Milligan then went to the Al Tap after leaving his bar. According to Klaus, Milligan did not appear intoxicated at this time. Klaus advised that Milligan came into the bar frequently with his friends, Jeff Adler, Doug Maddy, and Steve Rockwell. So are they saying that he went to this bar with Steve all the time, a lot? Um, that's the way I take it. Yes, because... And yeah. even according to Steve, him and Harry were not that close of friends and didn't really hang around together. He just yeah. happened to be with Harry that night. Huh. Klaus stated that he learned that Milligan was a missing a couple of days later when Adler came into the bar and asked him if he'd seen Milligan. A general census after that was Milligan would be found in his car in a body of water in the county somewhere. Now, you guys got to understand, we've got chaos divers. They will be back in March. They've checked several different bodies of waters that Harry would have taken. Um, so, and they're coming back in March. And make sure you guys go go support them. They just brought somebody else home. Um, they did the video last night. These people are so genuine and such good people. Um, you'll never meet anybody like them. Um, yeah, they're unreal. Like I said, yes. I, 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 I watched the video this morning there and put, put part of it, you know, one of them on the uh, Harry site. I mean, uh, hats off to Eric and all of them, especially Eric. I mean, I don't think you could, you know, he's doing it voluntarily. And I don't think you could get me enough money to dive into the Mississippi river this time. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> there is no. no way, you know, and, and to do what they done is just amazing. I'm going to drop yeah. their link in the chat too, guys. Um, just go, <coughs> go support them, show them some love. Um, they, they, they do a lot for people. And um, anyways, Let's get back to this. I asked Klaus if there had been any trouble in his bar involving Milligan. Klaus stated that he could only recall one incident in which a biker named Flame was being very loud and obnoxious. Milligan kind of backed him up on it. But to his knowledge, nothing further happened in the connection with this incident. Klaus advised that Flame was there with two other Grim Reapers. Picos and J.R. Jones. Now, what are the Grim Reapers, Mark? Motorcycle. It's a motorcycle gang, or I don't know what you call it, a gang. Motorcycle club, whatever you want to call it. Um, out of out of pretty much like the, I think the the Marion County, Des Moines area. I mean, I think they're all over the place, but I yeah. mean, uh, now, they're a big you, motor, motorcycle type gang. Do you do you know if anybody was ever talked to regarding this? Any um, of those three people. There's been some some stuff of trying to identify Pecos and J.R. Jones. Um, you know, I've talked to some different people um, that are familiar with them, you know, uh, those type of things. Um, I just don't put a whole lot of weight on it. I mean, even the problem really was between, if there was a problem, was between Mike Stalker, Klaus, and and team or whatever, you know, I mean, so I don't see how that would really reflect on Harry too much, yeah. you know, as far as, you know, them guys 
thinking they need to kill him or do something to him. You know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, and, and, you know, I, I, I've, you know, heard different stories about him being in the bar that night. Um, and then I've heard that they weren't. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's kind of just one of them, you know, was it the right weekend? Was it, you know, I, I guess my problem is there is if, you know, from the, if you go back to the statement earlier, Harry was in the bar, had a beer and left. Now, how was Harry now down here backing you up on an, you know, between an incident between you and this flame? I thought he left and went to the Al Tap. <laughs> you know, yeah. The, the 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 you know, if you look at the story, you know, for what he what he's saying, you know, they just completely contradict themselves. Exactly, and you know, I'll I'll ask this question. I've got a question too. I want to ask, but yeah. um, we'll go on to this. Uh, flame was described as a large white male, dark hair, and having tattoos of a flame and teardrop over his right eye. The case file indicated that Milligan had been in a fight in the waterworks a week before he disappeared. I asked Klaus if he had any knowledge that Milligan knew Timothy Ernie. He was a homicide, homicide victim that was in February 2nd of 84. So just a few months after Harry. And I know there was a question, Mark. Do you know, Stephanie wanted to know if these two cases if you feel like they're because there's a lot of different video there's a lot of different feelings with this uh, uh, okay let me explain do i think they're related (laughs) initially i would say no i you know because i never heard i didn't even really know tim ernie i I wouldn't have known him for anything really um you know i i knew of the homicide for a long time and of course harry's situation for a long time um, do I think that they were um, directly related? I don't think any, I don't think, hard way to put it. I'm trying to think of the best way to put it. I don't think that there may be, initially I didn't think they were related at all. Now, um, you know, I'll say, I'll be very honest, you know, like I said, when I said I was doing a big reset, looking at things differently, uh, going through things and trying to take all the emotion out of everything and going back through things with a fine tooth comb and, a, and detail like we're doing right now. Um, I think there's a possibility they could be. I do too. Mark. Um, you know, I think, I think the saddest part in my opinion, um, and, and, and uh, I, I told everybody I'm, I'm looking at things different and I'm going to do some things different. Um, I think they're possibly related uh, I think that there's a, I mean, this could be crazy, you know, in my opinion, there could be a, and, and the person could be alive, dead, who knows, but I think there's an unidentified person that killed somebody in Albia at some point, And that person could still be there. Yep. You know, um, I think there's enough information within the Tim Ernie case and within what I know of Harry's case and a particular individual involved in both of those cases um, that they need looked at. You know, I'll be very honest. I've found information with inside the Tim Ernie case um, that I cannot, I can't imagine um, wasn't investigated years ago. Um, and I found information inside that case, um, that's information regarding Harry's case and why it's in Tim Ernie's. I have no idea. I mean, I don't know if it's a complete, you know, debacle of shit that's going on within the sheriff's department of how you store and keep your records or what. But I also know there was uh, DNA taken from the Tim Ernie case and that DNA, um, whether it has been, hasn't been, I don't know, but I think there should be a a major uh, effort to have that DNA identified. Uh, Now with just like, I mean, we're all well aware of, uh, you know, the Idaho murders, you know, and the different things that go on, you know, uh, they're doing that through genetic DNA tracing. 
Uh, I think the same thing should be done with the DNA that's that's contained in Tim Erty's case. <clears throat> you know, it may prove what a lot of people already think, but it also may not. It may lead things in a completely different direction and may relate more to Harry's case. You know, it, it could go either way. I mean, I, I'm definitely not the, you know, the expert on DNA or anything like that. Uh, but I do think it's uh, something that needs to be looked at because yeah. before I didn't think they were related. Now um, I lean more toward the fact that I think there is a possible relation there of somehow, you know, and, and I think, you know, I'll be real honest about it. I, you know, I think part of that um, thing that leads me to believe um things need to be looked at a lot different and in a, in a lot different direction is the officer that, that conducted this interview in itself. He's the only person I've ever seen ever <coughs> up until recently, I guess, um, try to put the two cases together. But yeah. the only thing that I can see from looking through both entire cases, the only thing that's relative to both cases is officer Larry Jones. Yeah. And that's yeah. not no accusation toward no. Larry Jones, but no. that's the only thing that I can see relevant to both sides. Yeah. I you honestly know. wish Larry would talk to me, talk to you, get up here. And, and, you know, I think it would put a lot of people's, it, it would help a lot. People would not think. Right. I mean, know, I, I guess that's me. I mean, you know, some people liked me as a cop. Some people didn't. Yeah. Um, I tried to treat most everybody I dealt with or everybody I dealt with, with, you know, complete professionalism and complete, you know, I guess just <coughs> respect, you know? Um, and I know, you know, you're not going to make everybody happy and people are going to have different opinions. Yeah. But if my, if I thought my, you know, respect or my integrity, whatever was, was, uh, in question, I definitely want to step up and say, Hey, here's my side to the story. You know, yeah. I mean, and I, you know, it is what it is at this point. Uh, things are going to be handled differently for me. I can say that, um, in the near future. So, uh, we'll see where it ends up. Well, that, that sounds, um, that's good, Mark. We got to keep, know, it I'm to keep it, you know, it's completely, I'm taking the complete emotion out of all of it. But, yep, you've got you know, to. Things that I lay out, you know, you know, just like in this group right here, that's why we're talking about these things. That's why we're showing these things. Um, it's going to take, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's probably going to take more than just me running my mouth <clears throat> to get the attention that both Harry Milligan deserves, Tim Ernie deserves, and every yeah. other missing person deserves. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's going to take a group effort. It's going to take a lot of people wanting to stand up and say, we want answers, you yep. know, and, and I, that's where I'm at now. Uh, I'm to the point now where it's time I've set back. I've tried to handle everything with, you know, complete respect. Um, you know, I've been accused of, of, uh, I don't know, not using very good tact or, or being unprofessional at times or what, you know, I don't know. I don't even know all the words, you know, sometimes, but, um, I thought I've been very decent, tried to be very respectful for people. In my always, opinion, you've I, been too nice, Mark. You've been I, I've too nice. I've thanked everybody, you know, anybody that's reached out to me, I've thanked them for their, their input, tried to, you know, engage in conversation with everybody. Uh, but now I'm to the point now where it's all about just answers and, and, it's, yeah. and it's about accountability. And that's kind of my focus is looking at things with no emotion, looking at the details, and then to start pushing for accountability. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I that's agree. you know that's in every you know I, I think that's the biggest trouble with missing persons in the entire country, is nobody's holding the people that's job is to look into these cases accountable. Yeah, well, Stephanie said she hopes next month that they pass for Iowa to get the cold case unit. Yes, that yeah, would be yeah. that would be one of the hugest steps forward in the state of Iowa. Uh, you know, I mean, I I don't you know I don't know who. I guess I need to look and see, you know, I did know the ex state trooper that was pushing it before, but I don't think he got, he didn't get elected back in. I don't know who's pushing it now. Uh, I'd love to know if anybody has that information, who, 
who's some of the people that are pushing this because uh, I'd love to go talk to them. I'd love to, you know, if it meant going to the state house and talking to somebody, uh, letting them know what it's like from um, a family member side of how important these type of units are. You know, I mean, that, you know, people don't understand it, 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 you know, the easiest person to blame for, for not finding Harry Milligan is law enforcement. Yeah. That's, it's easy to do that. It, yeah. Is it the right thing to do? No, I've tried to avoid that. I've tried to stay away from it. Yeah. I've had some things I don't agree with, but it seems that like every family, every family member I talk to, <clears throat> that's the problem. Them, they're standing in the community and local law enforcement's position on their standing in the community or their knowledge of, of how to investigate these things. And I think that if you have a cold case unit that is assigned to do this, if this is their expertise and they come into an area like, say, Monroe County or, you know, Davenport, you know, Cedar Rapids, any of these places where I know other people that have families with uh, missing uh, family members, um, to have somebody come from the outside that has no influence by the community or anything um, and just do their job. I think it, it, it takes away all the problems and all the, you know, the, the mistrust and the uh, hard feelings sometimes that you have uh, when you don't see things going the way you think they should be. Yeah. Brandy said she's going to um, try to contact people that, Brandy, I tell you what, you need to drop your link. Uh, she's going to contact some people that could maybe help look into how we can get this going. Uh, right. I she, mean, that's, that's the whole, the whole, the whole thing right now is, I hate to say it, but, you know, I know of at least three or four families that I'm somewhat in communication with and talk to and, and different things. Um, that's the whole problem. You're one voice. You know, yeah. it's one voice in in one community and it gets nowhere. You know, it, it just, <clears throat> whether it's, you know, somebody don't care to look into it or they just don't have the time, experience or knowledge, you yeah. know, to do what they need to do. Uh, I get that, you know, it, it, just like Monroe County, it's a small department. They don't have a whole lot of resources. So, yeah. you know, um, it, it is tough, you know, but, but I think if, if there's a place or a way that we can get everybody together at the same place, same time and have a voice for everybody, um, you know, and that's what I've always they gotta, said. They got to listen. You know, I mean, there's 300 missing people in Iowa. If it was their brother, would they yeah. be doing this differently? Right. That's I it. mean, it, it's frustrating. Um, and I'm not saying anything bad, but I didn't know Harry, but I get so frustrated and I know other people do. People have told me it's frustrating. Yeah. Um, Brandy knows quite a few good people that are, heck, she, you know, that Jody Arias, yep. the one she had Joe Jody's attorney on her panel one night. Wow. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So um, she knows. Uh, and that's me. I'm looking for some legal advice on some things. I mean, there's some questions. You know, that, yeah, I mean, if I have to, I guess I could go out and, and pay for them or whatever to get. But I don't, you know, I mean, I think there's, uh, you know, I would think there would be some attorneys out there that would be just able to answer a few simple questions, you know, without it being a big major yeah. deal. Because, because you're trying to keep the reward money in case somebody. Right. You know, I, I'll be honest right now, that reward money, you know, we just went over $27,000. You know, yep. my, my next step with that is, is to do a little research to find out, um, you know, what does it cost to administer lie detectors test, yep. you know, uh, and, and see if there's people, you know, that have, they put themselves in this, in this case, you know, you've never been really sat down and interviewed or you ain't volunteered to come in and sit down and be interviewed, you know, um, Put it out there, you know, make it very obvious that, okay, this ain't going to cost you nothing. It ain't going to cost Monroe County nothing. I'll pay for it out of the Harry Fund. We'll pay yeah. for it. The people that want the answers will pay for it. They raise, you know, everybody raised the money. Let's use it for something productive like that even, you exactly. know. So, uh, like I said, it's about moving forward and starting to, you know, push in the directions that I think things need to go to hopefully get an answer, you know. I mean, yeah. Or at Stephanie, least make people step up and, and do what they should be doing. 
Yeah, Stephanie, I'll talk about that later on as far as any interviews and stuff. Because, yeah, we've got some things coming up. So, um, <laughs> True Crime Uncorked, she actually reached out to him and she is going to, she sent him a message. Um, he ditched her for court TV. <laughs> Well, yeah, you yeah, can't, can't believe blame it. him. <laughs> yeah, I can say I think I'd rather be on, getting paid to be on TV, probably. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I just, I, I have simple, you know, and when I, when I say things, like, I have simple questions of, you know, what rights does a family have when it comes to, you know, moving things person. forward? You know what yeah. I'm saying? And like I said, I'm not out for any money or anything else. I'm just about, okay, let's do what's right. Let's do what needs to be done. And, and forcing some hands, you know, whether it's a cold case unit or whatever it takes to get things done that obviously look like they should be needed to be done. And I got, I, I do have some, you know, legal questions regarding, you know, DNA, um, you know, and what's my right. You know, I know they have Harry's DNA. Um, they, they, they obtained his DNA um, <laughs> through some letters, you know, some some touch DNA and that type of stuff. And I know they have it. I know it's been uh, entered into, you know, CODIS, NamUs, uh, those type of things. But what's my right to that? Yeah. And it, and it sounds crazy. Um, but I did uh, uh, an interview here a while back, and, and a, a gentleman, <coughs> which is going to hopefully come out pretty soon and when he gets better. But he just had uh, heart surgery and, and some stuff. So, but um, – a good question came out, you know, I mean, there's, there's people out there, uh, friends of Harry's even that, uh, believe Harry's still alive. Um, and you know, is there a way to absolutely without a shadow of a doubt, prove that? No, but you put DNA into a, into a police file like NamUs to try to identify any John Doe's that are found around the country. And, and be able to say it's it's Harry or it's not Harry. But that's about as far as that goes. Yeah. You know, the question that to me was brought to me by this individual was, okay, how come you can't get Harry's DNA and put it into Ancestry.com? You know, the, I don't know what the other ones are, like, what is it? One, two, three, or what? Well, you know, whatever the, all these different Ancestry sites out there and see if that creates a hit somewhere. Yeah. You know, that would say, okay, if it went boom, boom, and and it and it comes back to somebody that's put their DNA into that system, and it matches Harry. Well, then Harry is still alive. You know, problem solved. You know, but at the same time, it can also, you know, it can show that okay, uh, versus all these out here, it never matched anybody. And then with this new, you know, genetic uh, heredity tracing, they can do the same thing and try to trace to see if there's any links. To Harry out here to say, okay, maybe his DNA is not in, in the system, but maybe he had a kid and that is in there. So that would say, okay, wait a minute. You know, if, if there's a, a relative here that pops up, um, there's a good chance that he could still be alive, you know? So I guess <laughs> that's just my way, or that was a, a thought process of trying to prove, you know, you have all these different theories of being able to say, okay, we've done everything we can to check to see that this is not the case and he is not still alive, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And like Brandy well, said. the kind of legal questions I got, just simple, you know, what are my rights? You know, I mean, um, yeah. I know the state of Iowa now, you know, they have laws that, that says I can get his, um, you know, birth information. Yeah. Um, I, I know law enforcement has it. Do I have a right to it? Yeah. You know, if, if it's state law in Iowa that a person can get it, then why would, why can law, how would law enforcement be able to withhold that information? Yeah. Brandy says, why would he uh, not let his family know he's okay? It doesn't make sense. And Lori, we have never thought he took off and left his family. He was too close to Leonard, his dad. No hey, way would he hurt him like that. And not to mention his sister who passed away exactly 30 days from right. that day. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, true crime, uncorked, yeah, Brandy, um, yeah, believe me, that's not my opinion, you know, but when you have people that are, you know, oh, you're, you're, you know, you're doing, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's like you say, maybe a distraction or maybe they just see the world in a whole different light than I do, I guess. Well, they need to show uh, proof. 
prove you know, that and, he's still alive. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, okay, I'll look at your, your thought process and say, maybe here's a way to prove whether he is or he isn't, you know, I mean, so, um, you know, it, it's, you know, it's my big thing is, is taking every single theory, you know, that, that relatively makes sense and walk through it and prove it, prove it right or prove it wrong. You yeah. know, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's finish up this. Um, let's see. Where was he at? Okay. Okay, we're, we talked about Tim Ernie, his um, homicide on February 2nd, 84. Klaus stated that on a couple different occasions, he had gone with Harry to Tim Ernie's apartment to buy some marijuana. Klaus recalled seeing Dorothy Kemp there on at least three different occasions. Klaus, which is Stalker, Mike Stalker, he is no longer with us. Um, Klaus advised that he didn't recall ever going to Ernie's house on North 8th Street. Klaus stated that he came home on vacation six to 10 years ago and ran into Steve Rockwell. They had several beers and the conversation turned to the Milligan disappearance. According to Rockwell, Milligan had related to him that he wanted to go live in Alaska or some other wilderness type area. I asked Klaus if Milligan ever confided to him that he was having any problems. Klaus recalled Milligan commenting to him that Milligan thought his mother was seeing another man. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, what, what, yeah, like I say, where some of this makes, I mean, some of this just absolutely don't make sense because, you know, just like, if, you know, it's, it's reading the, the statements for what they are. You know, yeah. it said, I asked if he knew Klaus. You know, asked if he knew Tim Ernie. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Stated that on a couple of different occasions, he had gone with Milligan to Ernie's apartment to buy some marijuana. Oop, you took it down. Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Let me bring it back up. Yeah. You know, it said he occasionally had gone with Milligan to Ernie's apartment to buy some marijuana. Klaus recalled seeing Dorothy Kemp, Kemp there on at least three occasions. And then the next sentence, Klaus advised that he didn't recall ever going to Tim Ernie's house on North 8th Street. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you just said you've been there three times with Harry, and now you're saying you've never been there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, None of this makes it, sense. It, it don't make any sense. No, it does know? not. And then he goes on vacation. Okay, he didn't go on vacation, you know, or he was home on vacation six to ten years ago and ran into Steve Rockwell. <clears throat> Out of all the people you, you talk to, you happen to run into Steve Rockwell? 10 years later and have this conversation with him. Yeah. You know, I, the last person to see Harry alive. Um, it don't make any sense, yeah. you know, and then he wanted to go to Alaska, you know, Rockwell told him, I don't think Steve has ever said that anywhere. Yeah. Not in, you know, in his statement three days <laughs> after the fact, does he ever mention anything about Harry saying he wanted to go to Alaska or go anywhere other than they talk about maybe going to a Tumwa at some yeah. point to, to have breakfast, you yeah. know, or get some breakfast or whatever. And the, and the other, and the guys didn't want to go. So um, where did uh, that come from? You know, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you know, it doesn't. Um, do you want me to go on to the next part? Yeah, sure. That's fine. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. I've got so much, you guys. Sorry. I got to go clear down. <laughs> Okay. And then it says, um, habits. However, Klaus added that he thought Milligan was home on leave from the Marine boot camp and was awaiting more training. Klaus said he didn't get the impression that Milligan liked the Marines and wasn't happy about leaving again. I interviewed, this is Larry Jones, you guys. I interviewed Klaus using the case facts and intelligence information. Klaus was very relaxed during the interview and his body language was consistent with someone telling the truth. I advised Klaus to contact me immediately if he recalled any further information concerning the Milligan or Ernie Casey's cases and the interview was concluded at 1131. Okay, first of all, you guys, being into true crime, do you know, we, we all know that people lie. And people are good liars. They 
they can look somebody in the freaking face and lie to you and not even blink an eye. So that statement, do you did you guys do those kind of statements, Mark, back in those days? Pretty much no. saying, don't look at Mike anymore. No. No, um, I mean that was absolutely, you know, I yeah. mean you didn't you never I mean that's a matter of personal opinion. Yeah. And you're not a, you're not an expert in that field, so you're not, you know, I mean, yeah, you might have in your mind that okay, I think somebody's lying or they're not lying or whatever, but um you know, I I guess where, you know, why some of the big things with this it tells me this is all a bunch of bullshit is one um why did you go from asking him about harry about harry and his disappearance and his conversation with rockwell and skipped right over to tim ernie yeah you know i mean what i mean what 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 that had what what, what makes that even relative to anything you know what yeah. i mean you asked really no details you know, of the conversation that you supposedly had with Rockwell, you asked no real questions about anything of, um, okay, if Harry was in the bar and had one beer and left, okay, how did this other happen? You know, I mean, it just is about the most, I don't know, I guess what I call pathetic interview I've ever read. <laughs> I want everybody to look at Harry. I want you to look at him. He was a person. He was a human. He was Mark's brother. He was Leonard's son. He was a human, a person. This was people's friend that just disappeared in a small town in Albia, Iowa. Take this and think about it. When you close your eyes tonight, and like I said, you cannot, surely you're not a monster. You, you have to feel this. You have to, you have to, I didn't know Harry. And I think about this young man every day, every day. Leonard loved him so much. Harry loved his dad. Harry and Mark were brothers. What brothers didn't fight? My sister Stephanie's in here. Ask her how we used to fight. But by God, we would, we would defend each other like no other. He, this man was in the Marines. He was in the Marine Corps. He was willing to fight for our country. So damn it, fight for him. Everybody, let's come together and fight for Harry. Please, let's bring him home. Because we can. I know we can. There's how much? $27,251. Um, that is how much we have raised. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, first of all, I want to talk about the future events. Atumwa Radio, we are going to be doing an interview. Mark is going to be doing an interview with them um, here before long. We've got... Uh, chaos divers coming back to do water searches. Of course, this podcast, every Tuesday, unless something would come up, we will be doing podcasts um, because we need to get through this file. And I'm not going to stop. And I know Mark's not going to stop. And this is my channel. And this is what I'm going to do. So uh, we're going to do that. And um, make sure you guys go and support chaos divers. Uh, please, they are amazing people that are like family to Mark and Lori right now. Oh, yeah. Um, some progress has been made with getting Harry's military records. And boy, it's been a long process to say the least. Um, you can comment if you want on that, Mark. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, yeah, it's been going on for two years. Um <laughs> Uh, you know, I early, you know, I am say December 2020, maybe even before, um, you know, I put in a request to get his military records uh, out of St. Louis, Missouri through, uh, I think it's MPRCA or whatever, whatever the next, you know, whatever the records place is out of St. Louis. Which they tell you online, go in, put the information in, what you want, the whole nine yards. I did all of that and what, two weeks ago, maybe. Um, I got a response from them that uh, we don't have your, we don't maintain those records here. 
Uh, they're maintained in Quantico, Virginia, and we forwarded your request on to them. So uh, kind of disappointing. You know, I mean, uh, been some people that's put in a lot of uh, time and effort into into trying to get those records. You know, everything from, uh, you know, reaching out to senators and, and you name it, um, you know, trying to get some help from them um, to see if we yeah. can get them. Uh, you know, and I, I don't know, you know, I don't know, I'll be honest, I don't know how much help they will be, you know, as far as, you know, there's been some rumors of, of them maybe interviewing a couple people and, and different things about Harry's things. There should be some communication with law enforcement in there, um, you know, those type of things. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I just want to see it all. I want to know what's there. I want to see if it does help with anything, you know, and, and most of all, I, I want to see, you know, what final status Harry had according to the Marine Corps, because he's missing. He didn't desert. He didn't, you know, he didn't go AWOL. He didn't desert. He didn't do anything like that. Something happened to him that, you know, discontinued his uh, ability to be in the service um, and serve the Marine Corps like he was. Um, and I want to know what status they have so that if I need to take the steps to make sure that he gets the respect that he deserves. Exactly. You know, my dad had him declared deceased in 1992, uh, to finish out his estate and supposedly to clear up, um, uh, you know, his status with the Marine Corps. Um, but I've never seen any paperwork. Um, you know, I don't know if my dad might've had it at some time. And it got, you know, misplaced or put somewhere I didn't know about. But I've never come across it anywhere of any paperwork back from the Marine Corps to say, you know, what was Harry's status as far as his discharge from the military? Was yeah. he still considered to be AWOL, you know, or a deserter? Or was he honorably discharged from the Marine Corps? And that's that's probably the one thing I want the most is, yeah, you know, is to see what that status is and what I need to do to to rectify it if it's not what it should be. Exactly. Um, speaking of Harry's fund, it continues to grow. <clears throat> we did a raffle what, uh, last week or the week before that. It raised over $100. Mark had said Larry, uh, Lori's making another blanket. Yeah. Um, she's, she's working on one now over there. For <laughs> Valentine's Day, and they are the best blankets. Uh, we still have donation boxes here locally, um, here at the, at my store and I know down home creations, and I'm going to be taking one to Des Moines to, a, uh, one of my friend's stores. Um, I haven't been able to get up there with me being sick and my dad being sick. Right. And, oh yeah, exactly. Um, anyways, I, I want you guys to know that Mark and Lori are very transparent with these donations. They have to keep meticulous records for anyone's review. Yep. So do, I don't want anybody like questioning. That, I, think, no, I think the only thing we've ever spent money on is signs, signs. Yep. Or, you yep. know, I mean, the stuff that, you know, like when we did the fundraisers, you know, my, my, my cousin, you know, he, uh, he, he donated, you know, when we had Jake McVeigh on the, uh, the bandstand there in Albia for a couple of hours, you know, I mean, uh, my cousin donated five thousand dollars to have him there, you know. So uh, you know, it's all accounted for. You know, I, yes. I, like I said, it's it's it is what it is. It's it's to use to find Harry or reward somebody that wants to step up and come forward. You exactly. Know? I know this, and and it leads to to finding Harry. I'll, I'll write you a check the minute we find him. <laughs> you yeah. know, um, it's it's you know. And if you want to remain anonymous. You guys can always put something in the boxes. Nobody would know. I mean, put something. If you think right. something, put it in the box. Yeah. Um, if you don't want to know anybody to know who you are, make a fake account on Facebook. Yeah. Do what you have to do. Right. Um, yeah, but and, I know. And the one thing I would say on that is just don't ever think that what you may know or you think you know is too trivial, uh, that it's not going to make a difference, But because it, it is. Every oh. little piece of information makes a huge difference. I mean, <laughs> um, there's been some stuff that's come forward, you know, here pretty recently that uh, to me could be a real game changer on things. Yeah. Uh, you know, but 
right now, you know, I, I'm keeping a lot of things real close to my chest as far as um, some of the little things like that, you know, because like I say, some, some it's about protecting people because yeah, I don't ever want to, you know, throw somebody under the bus and say, Oh, yeah. so and so said this, you know, that's not the, that's not the case. There's other ways to deal with it. You know, I spent 21 years as an officer and, and, and what I have seven, seven years as an undercover officer, I know how to protect information and, yeah. and use it in a way that it don't give up people. You know, I mean, I, I handled hundreds of, of informants and different things. So, yeah, uh, you know, there's ways around it all. It's about just getting the information, you know, to me or to law enforcement, um, you know, you know, yeah. it's simple, you know, send me a message, you know, I'm, I don't, you know, I, Nobody on here is, I don't think, has ever heard me come out and start, you know, just blabber mouth and a whole bunch of information about, you know, so and so said this, so and so said this. I may share a piece of, you know, a little bit of information that I have, but I'm not going to, nobody needs to know where it come from. You know yeah. what I mean? That's the big thing. Do you get a lot of private messages, Mark? Oh my God, every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's slowed down a little bit now, of course, around the holidays and stuff. But every time we do one of these videos, uh, yeah. you know, every time another, you know, like say a radio interview or, or a chaos diver story where, you know, um, I know they're getting ready. They've got two more videos uh, that they're going to release when they get them done uh, of when they were here searching, what they searched and a lot of conversation. Uh and it'll be a lot of uh, unedited conversation. So if you really want to hear what I got to say, uh, you might you might hear it on there, and you might hear a little bit different language at times. But uh, you know, it, it's it's just the way I feel and the way I uh, you know I feel about Harry and and what's going on with things. So uh, I know they're going to be putting those out. So every time something like that comes out, every time we do one of these on a Tuesday, I can bet you by Wednesday morning I'll wake up to you know at least a couple three. Uh, messages on my phone of people reaching out with, with either information, um, ideas, or you know different thought processes, those type of things. So um, you know, uh, every yeah. little bitty piece of everything counts. You know, I mean everything. You know. Yeah, uh, I've always said. I've, it's I've asked around about a couple of things. One big thing I'll put it right out there that I have been asking about around, um, <laughs> and, and trying to find out an answer. I'm under the understanding that Jeff Adler had an apartment on the square at some point. I'd like to know when and where, you know, that's just for my own piece in the puzzle together. I mean, that's, that's a big question I have when it comes to asking questions. So if somebody does know something about that, get a hold of me, you know, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll say, Oh yeah, I remember that. And it was, it was here or there, you know, I mean, yeah. uh, and, and part of the reason I ask is, uh, and, and I think, you know, I, I think he made it well known, but, you know, everybody knows Tom Morgan was uh, an officer at the time Harry came up missing and a very good friend of Harry's. And he remembers dropping Harry off in an apartment the weekend before he came up missing. Uh, but 38 years later, he can't quite, you know, remember exactly where that was and, and, and that type of thing. So uh, it's, it's a process of narrowing things down. And trying yeah. to get those little bitty details to put timelines together to put Harry in certain places at certain times to see, you know, what kind of mindset he was in, those type of things. Yeah. I would like to know if there was a game on Saturday. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's went both ways. You know, I've yeah. had some people say, no, there wasn't. They were Sunday, Monday, Tuesday because of the fourth being on Tuesday. <laughs> uh, you know, some of the other statements we've talked about. You know, people say there was games on Saturday. You know, I, I find that very contradicting to Harry being painting a house at the Grimes house Saturday afternoon and talking to Angie Koslick to being in a ball game on Saturday. It just don't, you know. Uh, yeah, did he ever go I, to I sleep? Don't, I, I mean, I guess I don't see. I, I know Harry. Yeah, he would work because he <laughs> wanted money and needed money and liked money. But I also know if there was softball that day, he most likely wasn't going to work. You know, he was going to go yeah. play softball. So, well, what twenty-one-year-old person don't want to sleep too? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, I, I mean, mean yeah. it's it's all about details, and that's that's the biggest thing is trying to figure out these little 
you know, little details and stuff. I always go back to the tape case. Was it a tape case? I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, I've talked to Jim Lundstrom, Gail Lundstrom. Uh, they said Harry stopped and picked up his, you know, his tapes uh, at the Western Club that night, 8.30, 9 o'clock, you know, or 8.30, 9 o'clock that night. Um, I don't know. Nobody else seems to, you know, I mean, some. I know he was in the Western Club at some point that night because I've had somebody tell me they saw him there. You know, in fact, I've had a couple people tell me they saw him there. So, um, you know, it's all a question of details. You know, was Jeff Adler's car at the Western Club? You know, uh, you know, somebody said that two o'clock in the morning, Harry was headed to the Western Club to take Jeff Adler back to his car. You know, um, if somebody knows that. You know, uh, knows, you know, knows maybe they saw it there, you know, I mean, so it's just a matter of little, little details, you know, any little thing helps, you know, Yeah. and yeah. don't be, you know, I guess the thing is, you know, I ask people, you know, don't be scared to just to, to step forward, you know, put yourself in my shoes, put yourself in my mom and dad's shoes. Yeah. If it was your brother, if it was your sister, if it was your family member, wouldn't you want somebody to know what you know? And you have to live with it. You know, I guess that's the way I look at it, too. You know, if you know of a detail or what you think may be a detail to Harry's disappearance or where he was that night, and you can live with yourself and know that me withholding this may, you know, cause this to never be figured out or it may help figure it out. If you can live with yourself and face God someday, that's then that's your business, I guess. <laughs> You'll find out what comes from it at that point, I guess. I don't know. Yes, I I agree. Um, I agree. But our goal is to keep Harry's story alive. That's it. Um, we are we we're not just advocating for Harry. We're we're advocating, and we're we just want to ensure all missing persons are not forgotten. None of them. Right. None yeah. of them. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's simple things. You just never know. You know, I mean, you don't. You can't imagine what it's like um, living on this side of the coin. You know, I mean, just like now, I know, you know, I I, I, I can imagine, you know, <coughs> Josh Wellman's family, you know, uh, live in the Cedar Rapids area, up in that area. Um, yeah. And now there's been a, you know, a lot of people have seen probably it, a, a report of, uh, uh, what was it, hunters or whatever, finding human remains up there. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and now here you sit, you know, uh, I, I couldn't imagine, you know, what, what could be going through their minds, you know, as far as, uh, you know, is that, you know, and like in, in Shauna's case, is that my brother? You know, I mean. Yeah. We need Harry's fingerprints from the, from the, his military file. You need Harry's fingerprints yeah. from the military file. I'm working on, you know, trying to, I, I, I sent an email, in fact, yesterday, I uh, sent another email to the, the Iowa uh, DPS uh, trying to obtain or get help obtaining his criminal history. Uh, you know, uh, I don't, so far I haven't got an answer back. I don't know, but, uh, you know, trying to find out, I know Harry was arrested. One of the pictures, you know, that, that thumbs through there is actually a, uh, uh, a booking picture. I don't know if it was from Monroe County, somewhere else. Uh, I don't know for sure. Um, so I'm trying to figure out, you know, okay. And I don't know, hell I was gone. He could have been arrested a couple times and, and I didn't know about it. So I'm trying to find out all of that information to see if, uh, you know, one of these places has a set of fingerprints. If there's, you know, a set on file with the state somewhere, I, I don't, you know, trying to look at every, every, uh, yeah, Brandy wants to know, did they not have them on file with DMV? Uh, as far as I know, I, I don't think in Iowa that's, I don't know that's the case. I mean, normally the only way that I know of in, in the state of Iowa uh, that you have a set on file is if you get arrested. And then only certain classifications of crimes do they really actually keep those fingerprints on file, which I think is absolutely asinine, but. You know, if you truly want to solve crimes and people all want to be good, put your fingerprints on file somewhere, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Stephanie has some more ideas on how to raise money, so I'll call her tomorrow and figure out. Sure. She lives in a bigger city, too, so. Good. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I know I can't mention everybody, but I appreciate everybody that, 
you know, that is on here now, and I'm more than happy to answer questions. Yes, you know, that's if where you watch, if you watch this on a replay and have a question, all you got to do is hit me up on Facebook and and send me a you know a messenger, Facebook messenger or whatever, uh, you know, and and ask me. I'll be I'll, I will get back with you. I've missed a few a couple times and looked later and went, oh crap, I went by that one, you know. But I, I will answer you and, and get back with you. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any um, thoughts or ideas that you want to talk about? You can come up. I'll uh, drop the link in case somebody else wants to come up or if you want to say it in the chat. It is whatever you want to do. Uh, yeah, I've seen I've seen True Crime Uncork said that, you know, in some states they do the thumbprint. I never thought about that. Yeah, I've seen that on a lot of licenses, but state of Iowa don't do that. I mean, yeah. unfortunately, I think it would be a great idea. You know, you want a license, you got to at least give your thumbprint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I just think, you know, even, even with that, I mean, it's always great to have it on file. You just never know, you know, I mean, they, for even the John Doe's that happened out there, you know, at least it's a way to maybe identify some people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Does anybody have any questions? I know Brandy's been asking and Stephanie must have, she's got to get up early. Um, and I know you said you had one earlier. but Oh, I was just wanting to know, that's what I'm saying, if there was a game on Saturday and if he ever slept. And I still, that I don't know why that case, that tape case, just I keep going back to that. I, I think it has some significance somewhere. I mean, there's a reason, yes. you know. When I first uh, started asking about the tape case and the tapes, you know, uh, people didn't even want to own up to, <laughs> to having the tape case, you know, or or being involved when it was right there in the file. They just didn't know that I already knew the answer, you know. But so it's like, okay, why why would you not want to step up if you were Harry's friend? Why wouldn't you step up and say what you know? You know, yeah. I mean, it's simple as that. Exactly, because they, somebody knows something. In my opinion. Oh yeah. I think there's a handful of people that know. Yep. I do you too. Know. And they might they may not have the whole story, but they have bits and pieces. Yeah. You know, they have part part of the story. They know parts of the story. They know more about, you know, what went on between two o'clock in the morning and four thirty in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because that's the big question. That's the, that's the time when, you know, I believe when Harry walked out of that bar, the whole world changed. You know, I mean, uh, it seems to be that um, uh, most of them think, I mean, I know better, but um, after two o'clock in the morning, it's like the town of Albia just stood silent, you know, and there was three, four guys out running around the town of Albia and that was it. <laughs> and it just seems like after that day, it was shh, shh. Yep, and that's why I said, if there was a movie or a book written, written at some point, I would say secrets from a small town. No, and that's I what know. I would call it because everybody is so secretive when it comes to Harry Milligan. I did not know anything about him until Mark and Lori came in the store and told me. And, and it was, I just couldn't believe nobody talked about it. I couldn't believe there was not billboards yeah. around, you know, and Harry's not the only one. There's a lot of missing people. I, I seen where Broken Justice said something about uh, the other case. The other case that's referred to in here is, is an individual by the name of Tim Ernie. Uh, I think Tim was 25, maybe. Uh, I think he was 25 at the time. Uh, it was <laughs> approximately four and a half, four, four to five months um, prior to Harry. Um, he was he was dating or living with uh, a guy's ex, I guess, um, took her to the school uh, where she worked, dropped her off, came home. Um, and apparently what it appears to me, my opinion, um, somebody was waiting for him in his house. Uh, he came in his house, went to turn his TV set on, uh, and somebody put two bullets in the back of his head. Yeah. One one in one in the one in the in the back side of his ear, behind his ear, and one in his ear. And he's still a cold case too. And nobody's ever solved that case. Yep. 
and they, you know, they had, you know, they did a lot of, I mean, I'll give, you know, like I said, I've looked at the entire case inside out and upside down now. Um, they did a fairly decent job of investigating it. Uh, I just don't think they've went the extra mile now that, that should be done. Yeah. Yeah. Sean's princess. It's crazy. I know. Uh, true crime on cork. No one talks. My son said, mama, no one talk is going to talk on that. You're talking about the girl. They found a girl's body where she lives and they still haven't made an arrest there either. Really? You know uh, how, I mean, I guess that's how old was it? You know, I mean, um, that's, that's the thing that, um, I guess I look at sometimes too, when you say, oh, no one's going to talk on it. Um, yeah. nowadays things are so much different you know there's so much more that law enforcement could and should be doing with these missing person cases that that sometimes they're not you know or yeah. or they are and 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 uh, you know i mean and you just don't know it i guess but um you know with i i don't quite understand some of it anymore because um uh, the you know i watched a program here the other day or listened to it talking about how many times uh, a person is on camera every day. And they said the average person is on camera 38 times a day. And that is the how truth. You don't find somebody to track things down between, you know, every business out here has got cameras. <clears throat> every, every other house on a block has got ring cameras or outdoor cameras. Yet our phones are watching cameras. us. And These you got smartphones. Oh yeah. The, all your smartphones. You're like, I mean, they can track everything, you know, I mean, you know, I, I, I get it when, you know, it's something like, like chaos divers working on the, the gentleman that went down in his little, I don't know what you call it, air, you know, air glider, yeah. hang glider thing, yeah. you know, they pinged him to an exact spot where he went into the river. Yep. You know, that's how accurate it is. I mean, granted, they, they, unfortunately, they haven't been able to find him, but that's got a lot to do with the river, you know, where he could be caught up, you know, how far he could have, you know, washed downstream, those type of things. But I mean, they pinpoint it to an exact spot. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I know one of the cases that I'm, I'm friends with, uh, you know, up here in, in the Cedar Rapids area. I mean, they got the guy on video buying a, a <laughs> stuffed animal for his daughter. And then, then, they, then he's gone. He just disappeared. And you couldn't find him on any other. I mean, you can't find a guy leaving a store. You can't find him on the next camera down the street. You can't do, you know, I mean, it's back to that same thing where you start looking at things and saying, okay, is it inexperience or is it just lack of concern to, to not go the extra mile? You know, I mean, I don't know. You know, I, I'd love to know more about all of that one and I will one of these days, but, uh, you know, nowadays it's a whole different story. You know, when somebody says, oh, no one talks, no one talks, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but, you know, seven years as an undercover drug officer, I can guarantee you everybody talks, <laughs> you know, in the eighties. Yeah, maybe they didn't, you know, there was that old, uh, you know, I'm going to live and die. You know, I'll, I'll die with what I got. You know, I, I'm going to stand in my code. Um, believe me. Um, there is no code anymore. The, these these people out here doing all this stuff, they talk about everything. Yep, but you're. It's true. Yeah, you just gotta know who to talk to. You know, I mean, you know, it's like like I like I've always said about Harry's case. You know, the people in this group. There's there's all different reasons for two thousand people being in this group. You know, I would say ninety nine percent of them are all here for the same reason I'm here. You know, they want an answer. They want to know what happened. Yeah, exactly. The good people of Albia did not take Harry away, you know? So, you know, it is what it is. Everywhere, everywhere you go, you if, if the bad people took Harry away, the answer's in talking to the bad people, you know? I mean, that's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <coughs> Facebook stalks us, Brandy says, and Broken Justice says, there's cases if there are poor homeless, they don't even, the police don't even investigate if they don't, e and they don't care. Yeah. If there's not, I mean, I hate to say it, and I, I see this a lot looking at, 
you know, some of the, even like the, the, you know, the, the cold cases there on, on the Iowa site, Iowa clearinghouse site and stuff. If there's not a family member willing to stand up and push, they're forgotten about. Simple yeah. as that. If there's not a family member to give them a voice, they're forgot about. It, it, yeah. That's no concern of anybody's anymore. You know, exactly. it's a statistic on a wall or on a, on a website and that's about it. And that's, you know, just... and that's where I, you know, that's where I want to, I, you know, that's why I'd love to, to find Harry, find an answer and then move <laughs> on to trying to help other people, you know? Uh, yeah, I am no expert in finding missing people. That's for sure. But, uh, I do know a lot of things about law enforcement and the way things are supposed to work and maybe could help point people in the right direction or help people get together and become a voice to get cold case units and those type of things to, to yeah. do what needs to be done. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions, any more questions? Uh, because I know broken or broken justice, well, her too, but Brandy's going to get a hold of some people. Stephanie's going to sure. contact me tomorrow and get some more um, because every dollar helps. You know, we have so many people come in the store that puts a dollar, puts a quarter. And yeah. I, I know Mark and Lori are so appreciative of every little one penny they yeah. are because it makes people it makes them know that people care that, you know, that it's sad to say but i mean i, I you know uh, sometimes information has a price i think that's sad but that i mean you know that's the whole deal is maybe at some point that fund will hit a point where it makes somebody go it's worth it you yeah. know I, I mean for whatever that's worth uh, you know, I hope that's the case someday, you know, then it, then it worked. If not, um, like I said, every penny of that someday will, will be, we'll you know, what I always, I always said, go, like I said, it'll go into helping other missing people. That's all I, you know, I mean, that's the easiest yeah. way to put it. What I always said, it's going to take somebody that is ill and they have nothing to lose and it would help their family. Yeah. You know, that's what yeah. I have always thought that. Yeah. There's a lot of people talking. People don't realize. I mean, the talk's out there. The oh, and that's out, all we've ever you know, wanted. All, it all circles back and gets back. You know, I mean, so it's all about keeping everybody just talking, talking, talking. Yeah. You know, and, and asking questions and 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 asking for accountability. You know. Yeah. What is it that John Travolta says um, on Greece? Keep talking, go keep talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't don't clip that, guys. Yeah. My voice is really not that bad, I promise. But um, <clears throat> I'm a little sickly. Uh, anyways, yeah. uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? Right now, no. I, I mean, I think we've covered quite a bit tonight to give everybody a little bit of more information, yep. a little bit more to ponder, and a little more to talk about. Uh, yeah. And and you're gonna we'll post this on. Will you post this on his Facebook page? Some yeah, of the stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll put, yeah, I think the one is up there. I'll try to put the other uh, the, the actual interview. Yeah. Uh, with Mike Stalker, Mike Klaus, I'll put it up on there like I did the other ones, just for people to review and take a look at and comment on or suggest <laughs> on. So. Broken justice. I swear, if you clip it. That'll be a bad deal, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I just want you guys to know, and I know I'm this is coming from Mark because they tell me this stuff. They have no idea, or you guys have no idea how much they appreciate you guys' continued support, whether you've donated, whether you're just a prayer warrior. Um, any any just being in the chat just helps them so much. And I know Mark and Lori and Mark acts like a big tough guy, but he gets emotional. Uh, oh, yeah, once in a while. <laughs> yeah, we need lichen. You're definitely right. We need lichen singing. Uh, maybe I'll have him over here next Tuesday night because um, we're going to go into some more of the case file next Tuesday, 7 o'clock, guys. And you will not want to miss this, okay? Just trust me. You will not want to miss this one. About the tumbler? No, I didn't see anything about a tumbler. <coughs> um, 
Hold on. Can you say it again? Because I don't see it. Did you see anything, Mark? Yeah, I didn't. I guess I haven't. You're talking about a tumbler with Harry's picture and stuff? I would freaking order one of them. I know, awesome. someone, I know someone. I know someone. We'll raffle it off right here on the site and, and do that. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, don't you pick them, Brandy? I'm I may be mistaken, but I thought, oh my gosh, she's gonna make a tumbler for us yep. to raffle, Mark. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yes. Oh, that would be awesome. And you can just uh you know, send me the pictures and then whoever wins, whatever, I can post it. And then whoever wins, you can just send it directly to them. Yep. Thank you so much, Brandy. I love that idea. I love it. I need to find some things that I'm going to raffle then. We need to all, <laughs> heck, maybe I'll raffle Jim. Okay. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> Not sure what we're going to make, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, okay. Well, you guys have a good night. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you, everybody, for you know listening in and and your input. It's all <laughs> highly appreciated. And thank yeah. you once again, Allison. I can't yes. thank you enough. You don't have to thank me. Just <laughs> my friendship with you is all the thanks I need. You and Lori are my family. Yep, exactly. So, all right. Well, you have a good night. Get some sleep. Yep. You too. Good night, everyone. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks.